In this tutorial, we're going to make this dancing light bulb robot character using only free assets. And most of the parts you see here are already available just from the default Blender add-ons. So we just have to combine this with the free version of my mechanical creature kit, a light bulb from Polyhaven, and some motion capture from the Rococo motion library. So we're going to download Rococo Studio. I'm on Windows, so I'm just going to click download. Just click sign in with browser. And I'm just going to make a free account with Google. Let's go to motion library. And here you can see new assets. Let's go view all and you can sort by free. So here you can see there's a bunch of free motion capture, which you can download super easily. What's important is that you choose a mocap that has a proper T pose. So in rest position, the armature should look like this and not like this. So I wanna to go to categories and go to dance. And um, yeah, I like this one. So let's click on this. And here you can preview the mocap in real time. Yeah, I like this one. So I'm gonna click add to cart. So now let's click purchase. And now you can click open folder. And there it is. So here we are in Lender version 3.4. I'm gonna start out by deleting everything and go file, import, FBX. And now let's go to the desktop and let's import our FBX. But before we click import, make sure that you open the armature menu and you enable automatic bone orientation, because if not, it's going to look really weird. So now let's click import FBX. So here you can see you have the armature in our scene and you can press play. And now you can see the animation. And the animation is a little bit short. So if you hold your mouse down here and you press home, now you can see all the keyframes. So let's go to the end and let's go control end. So now when you press play, you can see the entire animation. So our workflow today is that we're going to take various types of mechanical parts and just parent them to these bones. So that when this armature is moving around, we're going to see mechanical parts instead. And I'm going to show you where you can find all the mechanical parts that you need completely for free. And it's important that you set the skeleton to rest position while we are kit bashing these models. So for the legs, we are going to use my mechanical creature kit. So let's go to Blender Market and you can search for Oh, there it is, Polyfjord. <laughs> Search and just click on the mechanical creature kit. And here you can see there's a $0 free starter kit. And I know it says it's not for commercial use, but I'm gonna remove this. So when this tutorial is live, you can use this free starter kit for commercial purposes as well. So let's go ahead and click purchase and continue to check out. And if you don't have an account, you can create one, it's super easy. Okay, so I'm just going to unzip this and place it to my desktop. And in Blender, let's go edit, preferences, and under file paths, you can add asset library, desktop, and you can just choose this folder and click add asset library. So now if you right click vertical split, you can set this editor type to the asset browser and then you can change it from current file to mechanical creature kit free. So here you can see we have some assets that we can use in this project. So for the legs, I wanna import this joint object and we're also going to be using bar and bracket. And then you can just collapse this if you like. So now you can select this joint object and you can rotate it by pressing R and X and you can view this from the side and now this workflow is all about lining this up with the bone so that this part down here is lining up here and then this top part is lining up here. So let's move this over, let's scale it down a little bit. And then you can press tab to go to edit mode and you can select this and press G and Z and just line this up. So there's one leg. And now if you like, you can go to modify properties and under this bevel modifier, you can hold down shift and you can increase this so it's a little bit smoother. And then you wanna press control A and apply the scale. And then let's actually tweak this a little bit further. Now let's press Shift D and duplicate it up here. There we go. And then Shift D and make it double. And we can take the bar and the bracket and hide them for now. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can use this joint object to just create all the parts of the legs that we need. So I'm gonna duplicate it even more and I'm gonna use edit mode to scale this down and just make this into a leg. Okay, so that is one leg and what's really cool about this is that if you set the viewport shading to material view you can see that these already come with the material from the mechanical creature kit. Look at this beautiful procedural metal material that we already have. So now I think I want to make some arms as well. So let's take this leg and let's just duplicate it and let's do the same procedure where we just line this up with the arm bones just like we did with the leg bones. And you might notice that these are not completely straight. I think that's cool. It makes like a handmade look and it can actually really help when making hard surface stuff look a little bit more organic, I think. Okay, so for the wrist, I wanna go Shift A and let's make a torus. 
and let's just scale this down. And now I realize that this needs to be changed 90 degrees. So let's go to edit mode and let's delete this and let's select this part and press R and X and then rotate it by 90 degrees. And then you can hold down Alt to select this part and then hold down Alt and Shift to select this edge as well. So now we got both these edges selected and you can go Control E bridge edge loops. So now we got this joint that rotates 90 degrees. Let's place our torus inside of this and you can press tab to go to edit mode and press alt s to make this thicker and right click set the shading to smooth. Now let's duplicate it and let's go to x-ray view and press tab and then select this part and press e to extrude so you got this much longer part and we want to make this slimmer so press alt s to slim it down a little bit and i also want to get rid of this overlapping part so we'll just box select it and delete vertices and now to make a finger let's just simply take another part of the arm and press shift d and move it over so i want to make the index finger and i want to make the ring finger yeah so the hand will basically be uh, looking a little bit like this i think that's cool so now let's make the part that's going to connect these legs let's go shift a and let's make another torus now let's press tab to go to edit mode alt s to make it a little bit thicker and let's go to x-ray view and let's just box select and delete half of this now in edit mode you can hold down alt and select this one and hold on alt and shift to select this and press e to extrude and then z and then press f to fill and then you can press right click shade auto smooth let's go add modifier bevel yeah there we go i think that's good let's press shift d to duplicate it so i want to fill this hole with a sphere so let's go shift a and let's make an icosphere and let's set the subdivisions to three and right click set the shading to smooth and then you can just scale it down and you can move it over so i want to try and populate this area so it doesn't look so empty and let's make a cylinder scale it down and place it in here so we got like um, some connection between these legs and you can right click set the shading to auto smooth and if you go to modifier bevel modifier you can see that this looks a little bit weird so you can control a apply scale so now let's connect the legs and the arms and i'm going to use the cylinder so let's go shift d and duplicate it and i want to make this into like a torso object and for the torso i want to add a spring so to make a mechanical spring let's go to edit preferences and under add-ons let's just search for extra objects and let's go add curve extra objects so now when you go shift a you can go curve and under curve profiles you can select helix 3d so let's set the end angle to something really high like 3000 or something and we want to make this smoother so let's change this to bezier and let's lower the width a little bit let's try a end angle of 4000 instead so now we can move this over so it goes around the cylinder and under object data properties you can go to geometry and under bevel and depth you can pull this so you can increase the thickness you can hold down shift to be a little bit more precise and to change the diameter you can press tab to go to edit mode press s and then shift z to scale it on all axes except for the z axis then you can scale it on the z axis as well and you can set this to wireframe view and you can see that this has a lot of geometry and we don't need that so under object data properties you can lower the resolution preview from 12 to for example 3 and you won't really see the difference but this could help make your scene uh, a little bit more responsive so i want to add a spring inside the legs as well so let's go shift a curve profile helix and let's change the end angle to something really high like 20,000. and this just looked like spaghetti look at this yeah <laughs> so we need to increase the resolution so let's just increase this to something like 300 and i want it to look like a spring not a, like a phone cord so perhaps it should be 15,000. So now let's place this inside the leg so it looks like there's some sort of uh, mechanical spring inside of here. I think that's cool. And let's go shift D and place one here as well. And then I want to rotate it a little bit on the Z axis just to give it some randomness. Okay, so now we need to make our shoulder. And I think I want to use a torus again. So let's take this one and let's press G and move it over here. And let's make a sphere. Let's place a sphere in the center here. And let's hide the torso for now. I just want to see this sphere. So let's take this torus, let's duplicate it and let's rotate it by 90 degrees. And let's press tab to go to edit mode. Let's view this from the top. And I just want to extrude this like that and let's delete this oh it goes too far here let's press alt s to make it just a little bit slimmer okay so i think this needs some more flexibility and support so i want to add some extra stuff at the side here which maybe has some details that can interact more with the movement of this 
spine area because there are a lot of bones there that will be moving around so i want to make sure that our design can handle that so now you can press alt h to bring back this bar object that we added earlier and i want to use this to sort of support the torso here Okay, nice this is looking good now for the neck area up here which we are going to connect to the head let's use this bracket Control a to apply the scale and now it gets really thin so we have to increase this again okay so for the head we're going to use a light bulb so let's go to polyhaven.com and let's go to models and let's just search for light bulb and let's go light bulb 01 and let's just click download okay so i'm going to save it to my desktop so i'm just going to right click extract here so it's unzipped and now let's go file append and let's find our project file, light bulb, object, and just go light bulb 01. So now we have imported this light bulb and you can go to material view and you can see that this light bulb looks really cool. Look at this. So let's scale this up and let's move this to the top of the head. And this is really cool because now you can change the age of your character. So grown humans tend to have smaller heads, but if you scale this up, it looks like a kid. I think that's so fascinating. Okay, so now we want to add some more details here. You can see these holes. We're going to add some screws. So to do that, let's go edit preferences and under add-ons, let's search for bolt and let's add mesh bolt factory, which is an amazing add-on that just comes with Blender. So now you can go shift A, mesh, bolt. And for some reason, this adds a seven meter tall bolt, <laughs> but you can change the bit type to, for example, Phillips and you can increase the diameter. So let's scale this down, let's rotate it. And you can right click, set the shading to auto smooth. And I wanna rotate it a little bit just to give it some random rotation, which can really help if you have a lot of these. And if you're struggling to find where you're gonna place it, you can use X-ray view and it's a lot easier to see. Oh, I made a mistake. I have forgotten to duplicate this one. I just moved it, so. Okay, so now we got half a robot, but luckily it's symmetrical. So we're going to duplicate it. So let's just box select everything that we want to be on the other side as well. Yeah, I think this is it. So let's go Shift D to duplicate and then press escape and then press Control M to mirror and then press X to specify the X axis. And then let's just line this up. Oh, we've forgotten to attach a screw to the back here. So let's just, uh, duplicate one of these, that's important. So the kit bashing is done, and now you can see if you wanna change any proportions. For example, you can change the size of the head, or in this case, I think I wanna make this bracket a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna have to tweak that a little bit. Okay, so now our light bulb robot is fully assembled, but if you select the armature and set it back to post position and start playing on the timeline, you can see that these objects are not attached to the armature. We're going to use an add-on that just does this in one click. So this is an amazing add-on called Parent to Nearest Bone, made by Gentile, which just does everything that we want it to do. So let's go to releases and let's just download Parent to Nearest Bone. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And in Blender, let's go edit preferences and under add-ons, let's go install desktop parent to nearest bone. So now we can enable this. Now let's select our torso. Let's hide these for now. Make sure that your armature is in rest position. Select the armature and press A to select the rest. So the armature is highlighted and all the other objects are selected. And now let's go object, parent, parent to nearest bone. And now you can see all these tiny little relationship lines. These are now parented. So now you can move the armature around and they are attached. So now if you set this to post position, now you can start moving and it works. So now you can press play and you got yourself this animated character. Look at that. Okay, so since my result actually was perfect on the first try and I was super lucky, I have messed this up on purpose now just to show you one of the things that can go wrong. So here you can see, for example, these bars right here, if these are, for example, coming loose like this, that is because they got parented to the wrong bone. So to manually reparent an object to the correct bone, you can select the armature, go to rest position, press control tab and select the bone that you want them to be parented to and then press control tab, go back to object mode. And then you can select these two, which were messed up. Hold down shift, select the armature, control P and parent to bone. 
So now these will be parented to this bone. So now when you set this back to pose position, it will look correct again. So now let's add the torso. Okay, so the reason that we have waited with the torso all until now is because these bones are moving a lot and we just want the torso to be attached down here and then it's going to have an object that is attached to up here. So it will use a constraint instead. So to set this up, let's select this uh, spiral, for example, and let's go to object constraint properties and let's add object constraint damped track. And let's set the target to be this sphere. And now this doesn't really work, so let's change the axis. Okay, there it is. So now let's press tab to go to edit mode and let's just cut away some of the vertices here to make it not go out on the other side. So with this constraint, this spring is always pointing towards the sphere. So to copy this to the cylinder as well, let's first select the spring, go shift S, cursor to selected, and then select the cylinder, right click, set origin to 3D cursor, and then select the cylinder, hold down shift to select the spring. And in the damp track, let's click this little arrow and go copy to select it. So now the cylinder will also be pointing towards our sphere at the top there. So now all we have to do, take the cylinder and the spring and then just hold down shift and select one of this object, for example, and then just go control P, parent to object. So now this will be like a stiff core in our robot, which I think looks really interesting when we have all these deforming things. Now you got yourself a dancing light bulb. So to set up the materials, let's just hide the armature and let's go to material view, select everything except the light bulb and then hold down shift and select one of the objects with the material, go control L, link materials. Okay, so now you might notice something. If you zoom in on these bolts, for example, you can see that the material is not really working here, it's tiling. And that's because these bolts are originally this big. Press A to select everything, go control A and apply scale. But now something weird happens with the shading of this one because the normals are flipped. So let's press A to select everything again, press tab to go to edit mode, A to select all the vertices, and let's press shift N. So now the normals are recalculated. So now your light bulb robot has metal materials. Oh, and by the way, here's something really cool. If you go to the shader editor, and you select one of the objects with the metal material, you can see here that in the procedural material, you have all these colors like brass or gold. So to make a new material, let's select the spring and under material properties, let's click this button to copy the current material. And then you can, for example, select the brass. So now you can take all these springs, for example, and you can select the one with the brass material, the last and go control L link materials. So now all the springs are brass. And if you want to do this with the bolts as well, you can select one bolt and go select, select pattern and search for bolt with a star after it and then press enter. And now all the bolts are selected. Now you can hold down shift, select the spring again, control L, link materials. Now look at this, you got these beautiful materials in your object. And that's it. Now you have an animated light bulb character ready to render with beautiful materials. If you thought this tutorial was too short and you wish it was longer, I've actually made a longer, more in-depth version on my second channel, where I just go through every single setting in the entire process. So feel free to check out that video on my second channel, Polyfjord Deep Dive. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to support my channel on Patreon, you can now get a new desktop wallpaper every month with a new rendered view tier. This gives you access to wallpapers that are high quality renders of my work with resolutions that supports up to 8K displays. The rendered view tier also includes all the other stuff on my Patreon, like my project files in material view, which you can pick apart, study, or just copy all my render settings. Thanks for watching.